I've been on YouTube a long time and I've seen all of the trends, the let's play trend back when that was at like the top of the internet and all the people in my school were talking about Captain Sparkles and people like this. Uh, I remember um, when people started getting really into vlogging and then vlogging crashed because of demonetization. I, I remember these toy channels that would just make these factory uploads of every single day they would upload literally the exact same video with slight changes to it. You know, more recently, I, I remember the pedophilia controversy that YouTube has had over the last two years and just blew up this year. Um, YouTube has had a lot of changes. Now, when I got into YouTube, I was watching people like Classic Game Room or Lord Carnage, uh, otherwise known as Tome of Infinity by this point, who would just make like every single day he would review a new game with production value and all these things. That was what I saw when I went onto YouTube. And then in the recommended feed, you would see like GameStack when they started up. You would see AVGN videos. You would see Pat the NES Punk. That was my understanding of YouTube. Um, and that was what was big. That was that was what was mostly big back then, was just people making videos about video games or, you know, they would film the gameplay of their screen and then they would talk about how bad Ninja Turtles on NES is, which is one of my favorite games. But, uh, <laughs> no, that's what YouTube consists of when I first started out. And I've, I've kind of watched the de-evolution of the platform as it's continued to go on. And with no thank you, um, I feel like he represents a larger trend that is going to hit the platform. Because when you think about demonetization, who does it affect? It affects everybody. Everyone on the platform has been affected, not just good creators who have to sit there and complain all day about how they're going to have to work at McDonald's and get their GED. There's also a large section of the YouTube algorithm that is just going to be totally gone. Toy channels factory channels, these people who get into it only to clickbait, because they're not going to make any money on Patreon. No one cares about these channels. And so the only people that are going to be left inevitably are going to be the people who, like PewDiePie, benefit from monetization the most because they have fuck tons of views, or people who have a more obscure niche appeal that are going to be supported on Patreon. But it's not even necessarily what's monetarily successful. I think if No promoted his videos before, he would make a lot of money. But I, I think it's, it's more about um, what people are going to watch. You know, you think about someone like Hiding in My Room, for example. This guy, he has almost 100k subs, and most of his videos are just him talking, talking like this, not with a whole lot of editing, Oftentimes, there's like a six-minute chunk of him just making food, and people will watch it all the way through. There's entire subreddits dedicated to archiving just the stuff that he says in his Discord server or, you know, releasing the live streams he does after he deletes them. They watch through his entire live streams just to clip out the moments where he says something bad. And those live streams, they get thousands of viewers, and it's just him talking. You know, there, there's live stream archives of him on YouTube that have like tens of thousands of views. And most of the time, he's not even talking that much. Like if you watch my live streams, I'm like constantly trying to say as many words as possible because I'm trying to treat it like a podcast. But his live streams, people will just watch Daniel sit there. They'll just watch him sit there. They don't care. And I, I think the loneliness of people on the internet as they begin to be more and more alienated by the outside world, the desperation to seek any kind of content, even if it's completely boring, like a fucking ASMR video, you know, they're going to sit there and they're going to consume it because they just need to hear the voice of another person. They just need to see another person there to feel like there's a friend that exists. You know, PewDiePie, um, about five or four years ago, he was interviewed by ABC News. And in that interview, um, he was playing games with the old, you know, middle-aged woman there. And uh, she was like, oh, I can, I can see the appeal of this because it's so fun to watch you react and it's so fun for me to react. But before that, there was a really interesting part of that interview 
where she says, so it's like the people who are watching your videos have a friend. And I think that's indicative of the entirety of YouTube as it went on, because this, this interview happened five, four years ago, and yet it was able to predict exactly what YouTube was. I, I don't think... I don't think most people understood that five, four years ago, that YouTube was just meant to be like a friend to you. And PewDiePie videos, you know, they were heavily edited. They were, you know, just put out of him making fun of the game. And that was enough. That was enough for people to feel like he was in the room there with them and that they had him as a friend to play games with when they didn't really have any friends. But now you've seen that parasocial idea of what YouTube is meant to be. And you've seen it become kind of cannibalized, eating itself. Because like I said, someone like hiding in my room, he'll make four hour live streams that gets tens of thousands of views. And the reason why is because people don't care about the editing when they want to pretend that they have a friend. They want the most authentic experience of listening to someone speak, and feeling that that person speaking is there with them. And so, when you edit a video down to the degree that PewDiePie does, part of that authenticity, part of that connection to the other person is also lost. People, as they continue staying on the internet more and more, as they continue staying in their room more and more, they become willing to consume the content that's the most passive. Now, people who are hardened anime fans, hardened video game fans, they work a job every day, they speak to people every day, and when they come home, they consume things that are difficult. Those people don't understand mediums like this. They don't understand vlogs. They don't understand people just speaking. Because that's not where their mind comes from. They have a scheduled mind. They go out and they do normal things. They like media that is a bit tougher to consume, that requires more mental energy. But if you're just spending all your time in your room, you know, if you spend so much time in here, you can eventually just get into anything. That goes double for the media that takes effort, but also for the media that is passive. You know, if you consume YouTube for four years, five years, the way that I have, and eventually you've watched almost everything that there is to watch within your given set of interests, you become accustomed to the style of speaking so much, this low effort type of video so much, that eventually you're willing to listen to something a bit more extreme something a bit less interesting, quote-unquote, on a technical level. You're ready to just sit there and watch a guy make bread. You just don't care. Because your brain has been forever altered by the media that the internet has been drip-feeding you. And you certainly don't care. Because you don't have any friends to talk to anyway. And so you just listen to no thank you talk. I think... That's where the internet is going. That's where human society is going. Is people, as they become more and more alienated by school, by working, they're going to stop working because they realize that they're living paycheck to paycheck. Their boss doesn't care about them. Their life is shit. You know, the, the school system ends up shoving all this stuff into their brain, forcing them to know all these answers for tests. And most of the time, they don't use it. Most of the time, they actually learn to think less critically. And so, when people realize this, even subconsciously, they're going to become unemployed, and they're going to be watching whatever's free because they can't afford other media. They're going to be watching YouTube. And then they're going to be watching people who are also talking about being unemployed. If they make it down the rabbit hole that far. It doesn't matter at that point how good the content is in the traditional sense. It only matters if the person is talking and is charismatic enough to feel like they're your friend. I think No Thank You's videos 
they're on to something to a much more extreme degree than my videos have been. Because I've always tried to keep the sense that I'm a YouTuber. I've always tried to put thumbnails on the videos that represent what I'm talking about, to give good titles, and to at least edit a little bit. Especially lately with my vlogs, it's like I just put a bunch of clips together. I try to be entertaining. No thank you does none of these things. In his videos, he literally says that he's not a YouTuber, that he doesn't want to play the game, that his channel is in active rebellion to the game itself. He's taking the board, he's turning it over, and he's saying, I don't want any of it. And as a result of that, I think he's on to something that's indicative much, much more of the future of YouTube than what any of us are doing. Because he's just making one-hour videos every single day about nothing. <laughs> you know, sometimes they're, sometimes they're about something. But, like, the fact that he is talking is the point of the video. The fact that you're listening to him is why you enjoy the video. That's a breakthrough. That's a breakthrough much more significant than what the contemporary vloggers of our time have been doing. Because all of them have had this, all of them have had this parasocial idea of being watched for the personality. But none of them have quite hit it to the extreme degree that No Thank You has. Because he has just rejected every single metric that you could think of as being good. He said, all of the established rules, all of the things that you think are going to make a good video do not matter to me. It does not apply. I'm just going to make hours long videos of me cooking and eating and talking about Ambien or whatever. It's so strange. It's so strange that I'm willing to just sit there and watch hours of this because my mind has been broken by YouTube and by being in this room for so long that I just don't care anymore. That I just like the experience of feeling like there's a, another guy in the room. It's fucking insane, man. This, this is the future. This is the future of YouTube content. This is, this is where history has been leading up to because it started out as a guy playing video games and having a review of it in the form of AVGN. When you watched an AVGN video, he would be sitting in front of his TV and it would cut back from gameplay footage to him reacting to it with the controller in his hand. And people, even in 2006, were commenting on his videos saying that they liked those videos when they came home from work because it felt like they were playing video games with a friend. But that was a highly edited format. That was a film format to do that. But it was taking the advantage of what YouTube is right when YouTube started, probably by accident. And then you look at someone like PewDiePie came, you know, 2009, 2010. It's just him playing video games with some minor editing. You know, most of it is it's just playing video games. It's not in-depth commentary or anything like that. They edit memes into it and stuff. But they're not the films that AVGN was making. And then people become attached to him. Then they become attached to, you know, Let's Players, Minecraft Let's Players, who can make a one-hour video of just them and their friends commentating over a world that they built. And then it has millions of views. That felt like a podcast. It felt like there was effort put into it, but it was nonetheless just a few guys talking, playing a video game. What happens when the cycle, when the cycle of history normalizes each form of parasocial content, and then on the extreme far end is just not trying, that you've become so parasocial, you've become so YouTube, that you're not even going to accept any notion of traditionality. You're just going to reject all of it. When people get bored of the way that history has gone, when they get bored of the content trends that we've had, and trust me, they will, if the years that have gone by are indicative of anything, then No Thank You's content is going to be the catalyst for a much bigger revolution on YouTube.
hiding in my rooms content is going to be a much a much bigger catalyst for uh it's going to happen on YouTube. And um I'm excited. <laughs> I I'm excited to see where this goes because as more and more people get kicked off the platform in terms of monetization and uh more and more people come on just doing whatever they want uh and more people get disenfranchised by the content that's currently coming out they're going to want an anti-establishment guy like this and then eventually once enough of them find that anti-establishment guy he's going to be the mainstream that's how it's always happened <laughs>